In the third and last session of the Living Successfully with a Mood Disorder course, we'll revisit some pieces of the plan that you've already begun work on and introduce some new areas, including creating wellness goals, developing a crisis plan, and defining your supporters. Creating a plan puts you in control of your wellness and gives you a clear picture of what you're working for every day. It also prepares you and those who support you to handle the more difficult moments that the mental health condition might bring. Some key elements of a wellness plan include defining what wellness looks and feels like for you, setting goals for living well, outlining daily tasks to maintain health and wellness, identifying warning signs, developing a crisis plan, and creating strategies for dealing with setbacks. As we talked about in session one, everyone experiences mood disorders differently. It can be helpful to identify the symptoms you most frequently experience. In the symptom awareness section of your plan, you want to identify common symptoms you experience when you are not feeling well. This way, you'll be more likely to realize if you are starting to experience an episode of depression or mania. Take a look at the list provided in the plan and indicate how much each symptom tends to interfere with your life. You may also wish to have a conversation with your closest supporters to discuss signs they see when you seem to be doing well and not so well. If you've not already completed this section, please pause the video while you do. This section goes hand in hand with the next that focuses on your early warning signs. Now that you've identified some of your problematic symptoms, think if there are any early warning signs that you may be starting to shift into a depressive or manic episode. These may be things like the amount of negative self-talk picking up in your head or starting to need less sleep. After you've identified a few, consider an early intervention you could do for each when you first start to notice these signs. For example, if I sleep less than four hours for two nights in a row, I call my psychiatrist. Or if I begin to cancel social plans, I will set up a low-key activity with a trusted supporter to combat isolating. Then spend a few minutes thinking if there are any activities or circumstances that happen before you typically experience an episode. For some, this may be a visit with certain family members or feeling stressed at work. If you're unsure of your triggers, consider using the DBSA Wellness Tracker or a journal to track your daily moods and write down any life events that have happened so that you can begin to see if there's any relationship between those events and your moods. When you begin to see a pattern, list those life events as potential triggers. Pause the video now to complete the early warning signs and triggers worksheet. Moving on to page four of your plan, there's an old saying, start with the end in mind. It's hard to know if you're accomplishing what you set out to if you don't know how to recognize it when you're there. You may have already completed the section of the plan as requested earlier in the video, but if you have not yet had the chance, please pause the video and jot down anything that lets you know when you are doing well. When you feel well, do you cook more? Do you get together with friends at least once a week? Shower every day? Feel calm and at peace? As we've touched on throughout this course, wellness strategies can be things that you do every day to help keep yourself feeling well, or things you may do when you start to feel symptoms coming on. Make a quick list of some wellness strategies that you currently use or that you think you may wanna try. Include some information on how frequently you wanna do this. Do you wanna exercise three times a week? Practice deep breathing every day? Do a craft project when you start to feel down? Pause the video now to fill in the wellness strategies worksheet. be very helpful to think about what may be impacting your happiness and set some goals to change those that may be hindering you and enhance those that are helping. We all have things we'd like to change in our lives. Goal setting is just a way to formalize a plan to work towards those changes. For example, perhaps something you would like to change is having more friends. So on the goal setting sheet, you could write, within the next six months, I choose to make two new friends. Then to the right hand side, you can write some of the small steps it may take to get there. These steps should be small and specific, things you could start on today. So sticking with your original example, you may write, join a meetup.com group and attend an event within the next month. Go to the post support group social gathering on Tuesday. Or strike up a conversation with that woman I always see at the park this afternoon. Go ahead and pause the video so you can write up your goals. Now we're moving on to the ever important supporters. No one can go it alone. Take a minute to write in your supporters to your plan. Sometimes your supporters are friends or family. 
You may also wish to include your health care providers, support group contacts, or a local crisis line. The important thing is that you list people that you trust and who will be supportive of you. Pause the video to write in your supporters. As we move into the crisis planning section, it can also be very helpful to speak with those same supporters you just listed about how they can help. Can they call your doctors if they are concerned about you? Have they signed the necessary forms for those conversations to occur? Is there a preferred hospital should that be necessary? What is the most helpful way they can support you if you are experiencing depressive or manic symptoms, or even delusions or hallucinations? Pause the video and take a few minutes to answer the questions on the crisis plan sheet. The next section of our plan addresses handling setbacks. While often uncomfortable and sometimes frightening, overcoming difficulties and experiencing setbacks can actually strengthen your recovery. After all, the more times you experience something and come out the other side, the more sure you are that you can do the same next time. If you've been off track, make sure you're doing your daily self-care. If you experience negative thoughts when your symptoms flare, write down the common thoughts and spend some time coming up with rational responses. For example, if your negative self-talk says, I'm a failure, your rational response could be, I'm not always successful, but I am successful at some things. Consider past setbacks and what has helped you move forward. Remind yourself that you've gotten through setbacks before. Celebrate daily accomplishments, no matter how small. And our final tip for handling setbacks is to surround yourself with hope. We've learned a lot through this class. We've learned about depression and bipolar disorder, and we've learned about treatments. We've learned about wellness, and we've learned strategies to help us along the way. But if there's anything that DBSA believes you must learn about, it's about the power of hope. Feeling hopeless is a key symptom in mood disorders. Being able to hope for a better tomorrow is the base of wellness. Without the hope that we will be well, we would not try. It's important to recognize what helps us to feel hopeful, as there likely will be times when that feeling of hopelessness will creep back in. As a start, we encourage you to take a few minutes to write down thoughts, quotes, or supportive messages that others have said on your Messages of Hope sheet. And because not all things that make us hopeful can be captured in writing, we also encourage you to consider creating a hope box where you can store photos, perhaps a music CD, ticket stubs, anything that helps remind you of happy times and inspires you to feel more hopeful. Take a minute to pause the video and complete this page. We hope that you will look back on your messages of hope frequently. As the great author Orison Sweat Martin says, there is no medicine like hope, no incentive so great, and no tonic so powerful as expectation of something better tomorrow. Now that you've completed your Living Successfully plan, be sure to revisit it frequently and make updates as needed. Feel free to add other parts to your plan and to change it as you see fit. It is your plan. We hope this Living Successfully with a Mood Disorder course has offered you helpful information and resources to help you along your journey to wellness. Please feel free to review this course anytime you would like. It would be greatly appreciated if you would please take a moment to complete the post-course survey by clicking the link on the course page. Thank you for joining us.